Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third, and this is podcast episode 30, which is pretty exciting. Um, I've got some FOs to show off, I've got some promotion, self-promotion to do, um, and talking about update on plans, and yeah, let's uh, get started. Um, so the first thing I wanted to say is that as excited as I have been for fall to begin. Oh, and also, oh, this is Moose. I guess she's hanging out with me today. She doesn't usually do this, but I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> um, so as excited as I have been for fall to start, and like September is like the purgatory of fall, <laughs> almost. Like, it feels like it should be starting because there's like back to school energy and like it's... In, at least where I am, it's beginning to cool off. Um, but this September was really rude, I feel. Um, I just had a lot of like little snafus with business stuff. Um, a lot of you know that when I moved a few months ago, um, I was really trying to have my business be my full-time job. Um, which is making project bags, dyeing yarn, doing illustrations, and um, like I feel like August it felt really good and there was like a lot of movement and like I was like hell yeah like let's go and then like September was just like don't get too cocky <laughs> and um, it was like mistakes that were out of my control and then mistakes that I made and like all of that what had me just like I was like I don't know I I don't want to and I'm not going to like just give it up but I got like close to that point um I'm definitely like feeling better now on the eve of October which is also my birthday month um but it's just like I just was like give me a break <laughs> And now we're in Mercury retrograde, so, like, cool. Um, no, so, yeah, I just, things aren't always, like, sunshine and roses, um, which is a funny thing to say from Portland, but you get, kind of catch my drift. Um, so, anyway, yeah, um, but I also wanted to share some of like the positive things that have been happening. One of which um, is that a few like last week, um, Kay and I got to spend uh, almost a full week with our like eight week old niece, Natalie, who I've been talking about here, who I've done like a ton of knitting for. And um, it was just like really special to get to spend time with her when she's like so little. And uh, we had a great time. They live in uh, like northern, northern California. So we drove down there and uh, yeah, it was just really nice. And, um, you know, we've been doing kind of a lot of family traveling to catch up with everyone after being away from them for so long because we were um, on the East Coast for most of the pandemic. So that was like part of like, it was like so nice to spend time with them. And then when we got back, I was like, oh, I have so much to do. And it kind of like hit me full force. So we have no plans to travel in the immediate future, which like I'm very grateful for. And um, yeah, it's like fall is happening. It's it's like knitting season has descended. And yeah, all is all is feeling pretty good. So I feel like the last few podcast episodes or videos that I've done, I haven't had a lot of like FOs and I have two today. So I'm really excited about that. One of which, if you follow me on Instagram or, you know, we're friends on Slack, um, is my ripple crop top, which I will insert my reel of here. Um, and I wanted to go a little bit into depth about some of the modifications that I made for it. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's kind of amazing that I'm not wearing it today, um, because truly I've been wearing it, like, all the, all the time. Um, it's kind of, like, perfect in the sense, which I, like, it's, it's, 
it's really cool to like get to a point in knitting where like I know all of the factors that will make it like a really wearable item in my closet. So what I was going for with this and has turned out to be true, which is again really nice, is that I'm knitting it with superwash yarn. So that means it's not like as warm as like a non superwash. That's just like the nature of the yarn. Um, in addition to that, um, it's short sleeve. So it's just not like a full sweater and not going to be as warm. Um, and the color, which I very intentionally chose to be like an interesting neutral, all of those things have turned out to be like exactly what I wanted. Um, so those are sort of the factors that are making it very wearable for me and like a good staple in my wardrobe. Um, so the other thing is like just my like knowledge of knitting and how that shows up. So um, this is like just not going to do a good job. So I'll sort of uh, draw maybe like a little diagram to explain the changes that I made. So the pattern is knit from the bottom up. Like you cast on all the stitches, knit up, divide for the front and the back, knit like the two front sections, the back, three needle bind off, pick up and then knit the sleeves. It is drop shoulder, so there's not like a lot of shaping here. It's just supposed to sit wide and like sort of make like a little sleeve. Um, so one of the things that I did was I cast on and I talked a little bit about choosing the size that I wanted to make in the last podcast episode, which I'll link up here. And um, so the size that I picked, which I think was like the third from the largest size, ended up being like really good. Um, as I, the thing about this is that because it's um, ribbing, it really sucks in, like the fabric looks a lot smaller. So when I'm measuring like, len like length and how much I have knit, um, I really had to like stretch it out to get a good idea of actually the length that I had knit so far. Because if I didn't do that, when it did stretch out, you lose, um, w like, if you're stretching out to the width, you lose length. So it's sort of like you stretch this way and it gets shorter. So I wanted to make really sure that I wasn't making it too short. So when I got to the point where I was in the pattern supposed to bind off for the sleeves, um, the pattern does say, uh, like knit three extra inches so that it's not too short. And I was like, I think I definitely need to do that because I wanted to be able to wear this with some high-waisted pants and not have like a big piece of my belly showing. <laughs> Um, that was just like how I was envisioning it wearing and I'm really happy that even though it took a long time to do three by three rib, um, three extra inches with that many stitches, uh, it, it worked out really, really well. So I added the three inches as per the pattern, but when it got to the point where I was supposed to, um, like stop under the arm so there's like a little cast off that you do. I um, I wanted it to have more stitches on the front than the back. This is something I've talked about before. I haven't really like implemented it but I'm aware that it is um, you know a, a way to adjust patterns. Um, I think basically everyone, but especially people who are fat with big bellies, big boobs. Um, if a lot of sweater patterns, if you're knitting it from, let's just say like the bottom up, you've got this like circumference and where the armholes happen or, you know, side increases, whatnot, it sort of happens exactly bisecting all of those stitches. But like my body and a many, many other people's bodies, um, if you look at them from the side, we're not perfectly bisected down the middle. Like I have a lot more body 
in in my front because that's just like where my fat is um so i have my boobs to take into consideration my belly to take into consideration and so bisecting it would mean that the fabric would stretch more over the front and less over the back and there might even be extra in the back and so taking that into consideration instead of just um cutting those stitches like down the center i decided to um, use basically the pattern instructions for like the, the largest size for the front half and then like two sizes down the other way so one of the smaller sizes for the back half um, so there are quite a bit more stitches on the front uh, than the back um, I will hopefully include some die like diagrams here so you can get an idea and I hope that it made sense the way that I explained it. Um, but that ended up working out really well for me um, in terms of fit and I'm really happy with how with how it worked out. Um, so hopefully like that's something that I've like known but a lot of times when I'm knitting have just not wanted to deal with. Um, so yeah I'm definitely gonna continue doing that because I have another um, pattern where I did not do that even though I had thought about it and it really like flares in the back. Um, it sort of like sits away from my body which I find really interesting. So yeah just further conversations about fit and how to make things you know in, for your wardrobe that will last and that you like, right? Um, if you have any questions about knitting the ripple crop, um, definitely feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you'll be seeing this more in, um, some, you know, wardrobe, fall wardrobe updates and whatnot. So the other finished object that I have are a pair of socks that I've been working on. I've talked about them before. They're pretty standard. Um, this is like the Patton's Croy FX, I think, in copper. Um, I've been linking that yarn down below. It's available on Amazon. It'll be with an affiliate link, so if you really like the colorway and feel like you need it, um, I'd be grateful if you bought it through there. Um, I really, I do like the color a lot. I decided I wanted, they come in 50 gram little balls. And I really wanted to use all of it. I didn't want any left over. So I decided to do these toe up, which I don't normally do. And I did the fish lips kiss heel, which is very like square. I think that I'm not, anyway. I don't really follow um, directions for my socks. They usually end up fitting, they're usually fine. Um, but this is very square and I'm not sure how I can adjust that in the future. Um, it's like a three by one rib all the way up and then the full cuff. And to be honest, I stopped that and switched to one by one because I really thought that I didn't have as much yarn left as I did. But come on, focus. No, it's not. It's not gonna. So, but yeah, I really like the color. The yarn is very thick, as I've mentioned previously. Um, also, I was watching, I don't know if any of you have watched Midnight Mass yet on Netflix. Uh, I've been thinking about that a lot since I finished it. Um, but I was, the first one I finished, I did like a nice one by one tubular bind off. And the second one, I was like, I don't have time for this. So I did a, so there's two different bind offs there. Again, this needs to focus. Oh, there we go. So this is the tubular bind off looks so nice and then this one I did um mm, can't remember what it's called it's that like sock bind off where you do it kind of in the rib uh I'll look it up magic cast off I don't remember so yeah happy with this pair of socks I'm sure again it'll get a lot of use and speaking of socks um a while ago I showed some mending that I had done on some socks and when I did that, I was kind of like, how do you know when a pair of socks is past the point of mending? 
and at the time I was just kind of curious about what other people thought. I hadn't really gotten to a point where I was ready to get rid of some socks, but one of the pairs that I mended just like isn't holding up. And uh, so I'm sort of like, all right, it's time to say goodbye. And so I thought I would sort of bring back that conversation and show you what my point of no return <laughs> is. Um, so these are the socks. I looked it up um, because I was like, wow, these socks have lasted for a while. It is a pattern from Koopnitz sock, one of her sock collection books. Um, I got this like rainbow mini set um, from a yarn festival in uh, New England and I've had these socks for three and a half years. I have mended them, which I have talked about. I like was really happy with my little patches. Um, but this yarn is just straight up not sock yarn. Come on, why is the focus being like this? There we go. Um, it's just not, it's not a sock yarn, so it didn't wear very well. It's very thin. And so I put these on the other day and both of the heels like immediately just like blew out. So this is the heel on one sock and this is the heel on the other sock. And I had even reinforced that one a little bit. So I think I have realized what my, um, you know, the end of a socks life looks like. And I think it's this. Um, I really like this top part and like I could also just like undo this and finish the foot in another in another yarn but I can tell that there's some wearing happening up here too. Um, this the the minis which are a nylon superwash like a nylon merino superwash are holding up okay but um, this middle yarn which is spin cycle is just not a sock yarn <laughs> that's okay um, so yeah I feel like three and a half years like you know I'm happy with that and like the par parts that I reinforced are still holding up and I think I've learned a lot since knitting these socks I mean I know that I have socks in my collection that are older than these um, so yeah anyway just taking it as a learning opportunity and, uh, you know, just wanted to bring back that conversation. So those are my two FOs, which I feel good about. They're going to get a lot of use and wear. And um, I wanted to shift gears and talk about works in progress. I have cast on another pair of socks, which are Halloween socks I'm super excited about. Um, so... Look how cool. So again, I'm doing like, I'm doing bottom up because I want to use as much of the yarn as possible. Um, I keep knitting these like striped um, skeins from Nomadic Yarns who I really, really love. And I have them left over and then I'm like, what do I, what do I do with them? Um, with the leftovers. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm using a stitch marker from Maria's of Woolen Forest and Forest Charm, um, her like Halloween mystery box, which I um, worked with her to do. So she made all these stitch markers and well, this is Progress Keeper. Um, and then I made a little sticker sheet which I'm going to show you in a little bit but that was so much fun to work on that was one of the commissions that I had in August and I'm just like so happy with how it all turned out and she sent me my own little box which has been super fun and also I realized I ordered this and she's totally knitting the same colorway which is from the craft like colorway series from Nomadic Yarns so this is um we are the weirdos, mister. So how good is that? So yeah, as Kay and I's horror movie marathon continues in the evenings, I've been knitting on that. And I also am using 
I actually realized as I sat down that I'm using like all project bags that I made. So this is coming soon. It's not in the shop yet, but this is the little knitting buddies. Infinite is what I call it. And I'm going to make some of these project bags soon. So definitely start thinking about the holiday times. And if you want to request one, because I wouldn't blame you. So yeah, I've been super enjoying knitting on that. And so a few weeks ago, which generated a lot of discussion, I did sort of like my fall planning video. Um, I have a bunch of questions on Instagram that I have saved um, that people asked after I had done that. And I was planning on including that at the end of this video, but I think I'm going to save it for a separate video. Um, I actually recorded this podcast episode before we left to go visit Natalie, and when I uploaded it and tried to start editing it, for some reason I had turned on this setting that was like, capture like high speed things. Like I guess if you were like at a sporting event and you wanted to record. So the whole thing was in slow-mo and didn't have audio. <laughs> so yeah, that was just another snafu. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, so I had recorded this and at the end I had sort of answered those questions. Um, but they are gone. <laughs> And so I'm going to have to redo that, but I don't think I want to do it at the end of this, is what I'm thinking. Anyway, um, so during that video, I talked about like my plans. One was to finish that ripple crop top, which I did, Oops. which I did. <laughs> the second was to finish this Isolde cardigan that I've been working on for a while. Um, I haven't touched that yet, um, but... I will get there. That's next up. And then the third thing was planning um, a brand new sweater that I had talked about. Like, I have something sort of in my wardrobe, but it's not perfect, and I believe that I can knit it to be much more what I want it to be. <laughs> and so I told you the yarn was bought, but it hadn't arrived yet, but it has arrived, and I have swatched. So let me show you that. So the first yarn, ooh, this is showing up so orange. I know also my lighting is, you know, questionable. But this is kind of like a purpley, mauvey, gray, like Isayer color. Yeah, it's not showing up here. Ugh. Um, and then I'm going to knit it with this like black. It's actually not their like black, black color. It's kind of like a dark gray color of um, knitting, knitting for olive silk mohair. So those two together. And this is my little garter swatch since it is knit in garter stitch. Oh, come on. So I haven't blocked it yet, but I think that the Isayer is going to really like, whoop. yeah, do you like that onomatopoeia for like bulking out? Um, and this color really, I don't feel like it's doing a great job, but I really like the way it looks together and um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that project. So I sort of as I was like knitting the swatch and like thinking about just doing another fingering weight sweater, which is what I like to wear and also what takes the longest. So it's, I think it's very possible that this will not be done until like next cold season, like a year from now. Um, and that's okay because I know I will wear it a lot. And there's some other stuff that I um, have been thinking about where, like beginning to work on. I definitely have like Christmas knitting that I want to accomplish. So yeah, you know, we're, we're just two hands, you know, knitting and like having a lot to, having a lot to work on. So yeah, that's kind of all of the, um, projects that I'm 
currently tackling and working on and uh, I was talking with uh, my Slack community, so if you don't know, I have a Slack community which is basically like a forum discussion board um, which you could sign up for. There's a link always in the bio or like the description of the video. So we were in the last like one of the things that the Slack group does is have um, two to three uh, knit nights, virtual knit nights every month. And so the last one I was talking about how as I was sort of getting ready to record um, this podcast episode that I really had only worked on the one thing and that's like the only thing that was done. And um, you know, they were all like, yeah, but that's like relatable. <laughs> and I was like, well, I appreciate that. Um, and I do consider myself a pretty fast knitter, but I've also like, I think that about like several things have happened. One is that I'm not like when I finish something, I want it to be done right. And in the past, I have like sometimes even sped through to finish things, not even like for the podcast, just like in general, because I'm so excited for it to be done. And then I haven't like paid attention to, you know, like, like I've already, like just taking my time to like figure out an alternative way of knitting it and doing an alteration so that it fits better. Um, and I'm getting better about like slowing down and, you know, making sure that it fits because that is the point of like, and one of the reasons why I knit so that I, you know, can make something that will be perfect for me, will last as long as possible, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, I come sort of sharing that like it has been like six weeks since the last time that I recorded a podcast episode and the two things I was working on when I did the last podcast episode and have just finished them. So, you know, it takes a lot longer and that's, I'm okay with that and I hope that you're okay with that and I hope that feels realistic and authentic to the experience. Um, yeah, so that's kind of just another little thing I've been thinking about. Um, and finally, if you don't want to stick around for this, I completely understand, but I'm going to do a little bit of self-promotion because I've got some really cool things in my store right now that I want to share with you um, that I wish I had been able to share last month, but <laughs> c'est la vie. Um, so yeah, I've got the first thing I want to show you is the sticker sheet that I designed for Maria's um, like dark Halloween surprise box that she did this year. Um, when I was designing it, I asked her if I could make, you know, basically have printed more than we would need so that I could sell them individually of the box. So they are now up on my website for you to buy. Um, and this is what the sticker sheet looks like. So we've got like some crystals, some mushrooms in a jar, um, a little pumpkin, some a broom. I'm like, again, super happy with how these turned out. I think they look so good. Um, yeah, so that's one sticker sheet. The other one that I did is this cute little like jack-o'-lantern squash pumpkin sheet. So we've got all these little like characters. And this is printed on a clear vinyl. It's still matte. Like the finish is matte, that's like my favorite finish to do. Um, but I think they're, they turned out really cute. Um, just all these little guys. This um, sticker sheet is called the um, Squash Goal, wait, Squad, Squash, wait. Squad Gourds, <laughs> that's what it's called. So yeah, super happy with this little sticker sheet. Um, both of these are $6 each and they do have free shipping within the US and only um, like the price of a international stamp for those who are international. So it's a nice way to get yourself a little something. And because like nothing is going right, <laughs> when I was trying to focus in the last like five seconds of the video that I took, um, I accidentally turned the record off so I didn't get my outro. So I wanted to show you 
show you just um, a couple more project bags that are currently on the website, which are, oh my God, these, um, these bags for Latinx Heritage Month that I'm really excited about. So we've got this color and um, this color here. Both of those are super cool. So those are listed on the website. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely talk to you soon. And uh, that's it for me. Bye.